Good afternoon, Mr. Rahul. Hi, Pooja. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? I can't hear you. Uh, now, can you hear me? Just click here. Just go click here. Is it audible now? Pooja, can you hear me? I can hear you well. I can't. Mm, Rahul, it's something from your end. Can you hear me now? I can you hear me now? From your end, okay. Can't hear now. Yeah, Puja. I can hear you well. So, but I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Is there something on the mic? Uh, I I don't hear you. You are very well audible, Rahul. The thing is, you are not able to hear us perfectly. Okay. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, fine. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, uh... Okay, so if you are ready, shall we start? Uh, Pooja, how can I share my presentation? Uh, uh, okay, let me make you the presenter. Okay, now you would be having a share button at the bottom. Right. From there, you can go ahead and share. Right. I'll just share my presentation. We can see it. Rahul, if you're ready, we can we start? Please, please. Okay. So a very, very good afternoon to uh, Mr. Rahul Mishra and all the participants that have joined today with us. Uh, HOD uh, CSE, HOD ECE, the faculty members of our institute and very dear students. I welcome you all to the IIC initiative in which we have Mr. Rahul Mishra with us. Mr. Rahul Mishra, otherwise known as METAL, has broad involvement with cyber investigations, computer digital and mobile forensics, digital evidence analysis, end user license agreement audits, blockchain and smart contract product development for government, private entities, for higher education, and so forth. Talking about the man himself, the, uh, the handle name Metal suits him pretty well. The man of resilience who can flourish from the challenges. Aside from the entirety of his working experience, he is a hodophile. Traveling and exploring introduce him a ton. Continuously quick to learn new things, and this is the means by which he continues to excel in his life. I have known him from many, many years, and I know how he has... Uh, gone from the very beginning till whatever he is today, the, um, the owner of two companies and blah, blah, blah. So he would be talking about his entrepreneurship journey and how he was able to reach to this particular stage. I'm proud of you, Mr. Rahul Mishra, and I'm really, very really happy to have you here. 
thank you so much for accepting the invitation and uh, please it's over to you now thank you uh, so much pooja uh, it's been a pleasure and great to see you again uh, me and pooja we know each other for uh, more than 20 years now yes we were together in college so uh, I'll, I'll 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 go with a mix of hindi and english because i think hindi is language of our hearts and it goes pretty well rather than if i explain something to you in english so um i'll i'll, I'll come directly to the uh, how it all started uh, before that i would like to thank triple it nagpur uh, all the students who have taken their precious time out of their busy schedule all the hods and the techies who are present here thank you so much i uh, i'll try to share as best as i can and if you have any questions you can ask it during the session after the session i'll be more than happy to answer assist let's make this an interactive session and uh, uh, to be really very frank i'm doing this kind of session for first time in my life otherwise it was all about forensics blockchain and more towards the technical aspect of things so i i i went to i went to a, i mean i'm from a fairly decent family went to a very good school i'm from jabalpur in mp went to a good school uh, sort of a privileged childhood you can say and uh, studied mechanical engineering of all the streams uh, not exactly my choice but i was confused so uh, just like you guys i was also confused what to do uh, what not to do and back then uh, mechanical was still uh, sort of in demands so we started with mechanical engineering first guy to admit the fact that i was not good in mechanical engineering i was not good in academics uh, i think a very apt uh, uh, someone said it very correctly that you know i was born intelligent and education ruined me not the case exactly but uh, learned it pretty early that uh, i don't want to make my career in mechanical engineering because it was tough i mean being a mechanical engineer working in plant uh, with all those machines and everything it was tough i realized it during my industrial trainings and i thought uh, this is something that i can't do i should not do so uh, i moved ahead with mechanical engineering now uh, uh, my first job was in delhi as part of wipro uh, selected through uh, campus interviews so uh, i went there started working uh, that was my first exposure towards corporate life uh, started enjoying it uh, for most of my career initial part of my career i was in delhi only although back then even bangalore was a big thing uh, i should have gone to bangalore maybe but i went to delhi uh, worked in delhi for 3 years worked with wipro worked with uh, ibm i was in corporate sales and worked in a company a startup called lattice bridge it was incubated by iit chennai and uh, i was again in delhi i was taking care of sales so in, in total i was in delhi for 3 years in total i worked that was my entire working journey my entire journey as an employee was for 3 years only from 2003 to 2006 uh, that was very important why it was important because i learned to some extent how big companies how big corporate work i also worked in a startup so i got to know okay this is how a startup works uh, these are the things uh, which are needed uh, first and foremost which uh, I, i think everyone can inculcate in their lives is they can be disciplined they can be on time like today i was not on time but i was not on time because of some technical issue usually i'm on time so that is something uh, i i am really proud of that i'm usually on time i'm usually um, uh, if i commit something i try to complete it if i say i'll send you a mail or if i say i'll send you some details so i'll be on time or i'll i'll ask for more time if i'm not done hey i've not done this thing i may need another 2 3 4 days so i'll i'll try to uh, do it that way so uh, that that is how uh, if you're disciplined things will you know sort of work out for you so i was working in delhi uh working in a startup that was my third job and i sort of realized that you know this is uh, something where i am not fit for so that was more like a you know heartbreak that i realized that uh, this is something that uh, not i uh, want to do 
Now, why it happened? Because first, I was not enjoying my work. Secondly, I was into a pre-sales position. Pre-sales positions are usually very technical. My job uh, involved working on tender, understanding government processes. Most of the time, I was working with government setup only. So government projects take a lot of time to conclude and convert. And maybe you work for uh, six months, seven months, and uh, uh, after six, seven months, nothing happens. So all, all that hard work, it goes into vain. So uh, I thought uh, this is something so, uh, uh, I don't want to do. And because I was not able to convert the projects, there was hardly any reward or recognition or appreciation coming in. Whatever I had, it was very few and far in between. So uh, I realized that I, uh, I'm someone who can take the risk. As I said, I was born into a decent family, so there was no issue as such. Ki, you know, bahen ki shadi karni hai and, uh, father not well, papa ki tabiya theek nahi and all those things. So though it was not there. So, so I was fairly privileged that way. So I, I came back to Jabalpur, started my company, uh, called it Bluest Metal Solutions Private Limited. So I had no no idea of what name you should keep. Otherwise, I, I, would, have, I would have kept it as the Facebook also. However, I thought that this is how a name should be. So I, I uh, started a company. We, uh, uh, from inception it will, itself, it was a private limited company. Initially, it was tough because I was doing only sales related consulting. So for all the companies who want to come to India, I was consulting them in various aspects, but largely depending on the sales part, because I realized it pretty early that I'm good at sales, good at talking to people, good at sort of convincing people. So I had only two options, either start a company or join an MLM multi-level marketing kind of thing, you know? <laughs> so MLM was not my cup of tea, so I started a company, went into sales straight away. When I started, it was largely a work from home kind of thing and talk about 2006, 16 years back. Uh, right now, work from home is something that everyone is aware of. However, back at that point in time, work from, from home was something not a lot of people heard about. So it was tough. It was very tough convincing parents. It was very tough convincing friends, very tough convincing my siblings. I have an elder sister and a younger brother. So uh, uh, they were not able to answer ki ladka kya karta hai. So they said that he is doing something on his laptop or internet something. He travels a lot, but we don't know what he's into. Uh, so uh, th th that is how it all, it all started. My first project was with Indian Army wherein we had to supply a software which will integrate all the systems over LAN. Now, coincidentally, while we trans, while we supplied the software, it was from a UK based company. Uh, I went for another project to Chennai and then I got a call from this colonel. Apparently his name was also Rahul that it's not working on our Wi-Fi. I said, sir, I can explain it to you and you can, you just need to do a few clicks and it'll happen. He said, no boss, we have paid you. You will have to come and do it here. So from Chennai, I went to Bangalore by, uh, bus and from Bangalore I got into a train and came back to Jabalpur and 8 o'clock I reached Jabalpur by 10 o'clock we fixed the situation. However, I learned something there that this is something I should not do. This is something I shouldn't have done because it was not something when I, mean, I can't go to each and every place to solve each and every problem. So since then we for a large time till you can say 2015 and 16. I was not doing any IT projects directly. I was doing it with my partners. Now, when I was doing consulting 2006, 2007, 2008, and part of 2009 was really great because a lot of companies were coming to India. We, are, we were helping them in uh, getting their sales right, and we were, we were making a lot of money. However, life is not all hunky-dory rosy. So uh, that is what I call a sine wave. So sine wave is something which goes up and sine wave is something which comes down. So in 2009, my world came crashing. Uh, that was my first setback. I have had, uh, I, I can say three major setbacks in uh, my entrepreneurship or my corporate career so far. That was my first major uh, setback. 
and i was not prepared for it so i had very little kitty saved in you know for bad times almost uh, very little or no money for uh, any kind of future uh, this thing because i was living the high life so uh, th- those 3 4 months were really bad however during those uh, months also i realized that i need to diversify my business we i need to diversify into things that i can do and i also realized that i need to keep myself motivated as an entrepreneur it is very hard to keep yourself motivated bahut tough ho jata hai yaar matlab subah se uthke aapko pata hai aapke paas koi kaam nahi hai so you don't want to get ready and go to office because aapko pata hai ki kuch nahi hona hai matlab you'll you'll go there you may watch a movie and come back but uh, somehow you will have to keep yourself motivated and uh, everyone draws their strengths from different things or maybe different people and uh, so you guys may also find something that that may fit into uh, something wherein you can draw your strengths from so i drew my strengths from you know my high life i realized that boss i need these things in my life i want a comfortable life and for that uh, the easiest way is to make money and that is where i concentrated we diversified we went into uh, hardcore cyber uh, crime investigations computer forensics mobile forensics uh, prior to that i was only consulting in that but th- this is when i went hands on and we start we developed a wing and i started doing it uh, then life was again i mean sine wave it came down and it started going up so um, we 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 went up in 2000 so 2010 was my second best year 2011 became my best year then 2012 became my best year 2013 became my best year so i was going up 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 and i bit uh, more than what i can chew so we made new partners we hired a lot of people we uh, took a large uh, space for our office and i thought that this is life and that we will get funded and soon it will happen so just an just an anecdote that till now uh, i'm bootstrapped we have not taken a single rupee as outside funding i'm sort of happy at what you are again in 2014 to 2015 the natural law of gravity took place we came down uh, this time because of because i relied uh, on people outside my organization i instead of developing my core competencies again i was dependent on partners but this time i was financially prepared so it was a, uh, back then i thought that it's it is a, such a big thing but now i realized that it was just a bump and we were on course again and again we from 2016 onwards again back into diversification uh, started up Uh, uh, a small group in blockchain um, research it started and then uh, we reshaped it into a full fledged organization in 2018 now we need to realize that all these things that come into our path i am calling it a bump you can calling it uh, you can call it an obstacle or you can call it whatever but these things are very important in our life to realize our true potential at times we only perform well when we are under too much of pressure jaise ki aap log jis din exam rehta hai us din subah subah ekdam sabki memory photographic ho jati hai and whatever we uh, see or hear we realize it through the day and that is how i have passed my engineering and maybe uh, a lot of you will also be uh, doing it similar way if not doing then it's great otherwise that is one way of uh, doing engineering so again keeping yourself motivated uh diversifying into different geographies or, de- or in this case we have not exactly diversified we were already into cyber we were sort of backward integrated into uh cyber g- got uh, more into cryptography we got cryptographic elements we developed a group on blockchain started researching in 2016 started delivering projects in 2018 so again exploring all the unexplored uh, verticals that we had now in this case obviously you need to learn unlearn and relearn uh, this is one very important aspect of life wherein you need to learn a lot of new things you need to unlearn a lot of bad habits and you need to relearn something what you have forgot over the years it can be you know coming to office on time it can be uh, appreciating normal gestures it can be you know a lot of people right now they don't even say thank you to someone who 
to, to someone who has really helped you. Now, this is required. This is essential because karma, uh, it all comes back. So you need to take this into account that you need to be appreciative of the fact to people who stood by you when your time was right or when your time was wrong. So again, we, we did a lot of R and D. We did a lot of research and development, developed a group group on blockchain and from there started delivering projects. Now, again, um, what is entrepreneurship all about? In my case, it is about connecting the dots. In my case, it is more about what we intend to do or what we intend to achieve. Now, if you want to make a million dollar organization, you will help, you will have to solve a million dollar problem. If you want to make a billion dollar organization, you will have to solve a billion dollar problem. If you want to make a trillion dollar organization, you will have to solve a trillion dollar problem. So it, in, in, a, in a sense, in a sentence, it is very easy to say that we want to create a million dollar organization, solve a million dollar problem, and there it is, voila. However, it is easier said than done. Uh, you will, uh, a lot of our solutions are in front of us. We just need to connect the dots. You don't have to come up with a solution every time yourself. And that is why you have a company, you have resources, you have people. So collectively, we solve the problem. I'm someone who will do the sales. Someone else will do the, will prepare the solution. Someone else will test it, deliver it, will provide support for it and so on and so forth. That is how you connect the dots. That is how you solve a problem. Now, in, in, uh, in over the years, a lot of people came into my life. I trusted a lot of people who betrayed my trust. Um, uh, I trusted a lot of people who, uh, uh, and that trust has paid rich, very rich dividends indeed. Uh, we have become friends for life. So uh, I, uh, we started working outside India since 2015 only. So it is very recent. For the last seven years only, we started uh, something called our ODC Overseas Development Center. And uh, all my clients with whom I have worked, we realized that uh, we have become friends for life. In 2018, while we started delivering uh, big blockchain solutions, I realized that we can get into uh, cryptocurrency mining also. Back then, it was not legal in India. Um, I met a client, uh, his name is Idan. Uh, if you can see, uh, if you can see, there's a Bitcoin ATM here. Uh, this is uh, Israel. And we started Ethereum mining, uh, GPU mining in Israel in 2018 itself. I exited that earlier this year in February because we were getting good rate for our hardware. It was very expensive for me to mine because of lockdown. I could hardly travel to Israel and there were a number of restrictions, uh, particularly for Indians because a lot of uh, my vaccine certificate, co-vaccine, was not um, approved by UN and so on and so forth. So. Uh, so as i said connecting the dots realizing your potential uh, if you have a lot of times things are in front of us wherein we can see okay that this is something i could have done but you should connect the dots you should take the opportunity with you and you should deliver it there is always some element of risk but there is always some element of risk even in crossing the road so you will have to take risk and you will have to go ahead Now, what is important? This is this is my last slide here, and I talk a lot about this slide. What is important if you want to be an entrepreneur? So first and foremost, what is important first and the only thing is required is clarity. So you you can think what you want to do and you can achieve. That is, uh, you need to have that kind of confidence in yourself. You'll have to learn to say no. If you want to go ahead ahead in your life, you'll have to start saying no. If you can't do anything, thinking my friend can do it, it's better to divert it to your friend than you saying yes to something that you can't do. Uh, basic financial planning is always important. You can write your expenses, you can write your future uh, money which is coming in and so on and so forth. Now, what is clarity? I uh, always give this example to a lot of people. What is clarity? and they don't answer so i i went to uh, a college in indore it was a tier 2 university and i was speaking to computer science students and i asked that 
can you name any fortune 500 company which is an indian they said reliance unfortunately reliance is not they said tata group so i said tata is a group it's not a company there are multiple companies in the group however none of them are a fortune 500 company so the only indian fortune 500 company right now is rajesh exports limited they make almost uh, 30 to 35 percent they mint 30 to 35 percent of global gold uh, they have refineries in middle east they have refineries in U europe they have refineries in india uh then students said that uh, okay we uh, we rajesh exports is a very new name for us and it is something that we should have learned over the years but somehow it has never happened because rajesh exports is a media shy company they are more into a b2b kind of segment so it was not required to be for them to be in the public domain then i asked that um, if if given a chance that you can marry any girl on the planet which one uh, would you like to marry a lot of them said katrina kaif someone said karina kapoor someone said a uh, new heroines i'm not sure uh, the names so the, so however and then i said that okay whom do you want to uh, which company do you want to work for and they said we would like to work for google we would like to work work for microsoft so i said why don't you make your choice more realistic that if if google and microsoft they are coming to your university it's fine but if they are not coming then so they said that oh yes sir, the these companies are not coming to our university and uh, the companies who are coming are uh, tier two companies or tier three companies and uh, or the likes of the tcs's and the infosys who are mass recruiters so i said can you uh, name companies in the order in which up a case order but i'll just map jana chate on companies made so the, again they started with google microsoft and everything so i said every guy has a ranking i there was a student i asked him that which company you want to go he said google microsoft and um at, uh, google is alphabet right now google microsoft apple and so on and so forth so i said that you want to uh, go to companies who don't come here it's like expecting uh, and uh, Ashwara Rai or Katrina Kaif or Karina Kapoor to marry you. However, you will have to marry someone in your community, someone from Indore only. So why don't you be realistic that whom do you want to marry? So he was not able to answer. So I asked, how many girls do you have in your class? He said, we have roughly 30 girls, almost 50% are girls. I said, do you have a ranking of those girls that this will be the, this will be my first choice to be a girlfriend this will be my second choice to be a girlfriend third will be third choice can be this girl fourth choice can be this girl and most of the boys i know this for fact most of the boys say said yes similar was the question i asked girl do you have a have a choice that this can be uh, this boy looks like a Rithik roshan or this so he can be my boyfriend number one this boy looks like uh, sylvester stallone so this can be my boyfriend number two and so on and so forth so everyone had a ranking so everyone has a ranking but those rankings are never realistic if you can have a realistic ranking on what you want to achieve in your life on what you want to do in your life it will make more sense you can i'm, I'm not saying that none of you will get uh, a katrina calf to marry i mean my best wishes if you can do that however if we, if we have any kind of ranking whether it is related to our academics whether it is related to uh, the job that i would like to do then it becomes more realistic and it is something that you will be more fit into and apt into so aapko aisa lagega ki you are at the right place aapko aisa lagega this is something you can do and aapko aisa lagega this is something which is important uh, last but not by any means not the least money is not important uh but uh, i mean time a lot of people say time is uh, the most important thing that you have i i'm i'll be the first person to say that money is not important however it plays a very important role in your life it is important to make money because you mean you like to maintain certain kind of lifestyle you want to be comfortable and uh, at the end of the day that is what we are working for however money is not a major uh, money is not something you work for money is a byproduct you work because you want to change someone's life 
I work because I love working. I love uh, come to I mean, well, coming to my office, speak to my people. I like speaking, so I do a lot of sales calls. And uh, yes, money is a byproduct. Yes, money gives us a lifestyle which we want. And uh, I have so many people in our office who are, who are from really humble background. Uh, really, I'm as I said, I was born privileged, but there are so many of them uh, who are really from humble background. Uh, I would say poor background and because they are working with us for so many years, it uh, we have touched not only their lives, we have touched life of their parents and we have a founder's day in our office wherein we invite the parents also. They come, they are happy for their kids and I'm happy for them. So at, at some point in time, you need to realize that happiness is something which is most important. Last, and this is really the last thing, as an entrepreneur, you need to enjoy the journey. Um, you can't say that I'll be happy when I'll have a million dollars in my bank account. That day may never come. Or by the time it will come, maybe your appetite goes to a billion dollars. So you need to enjoy the journey. You need to enjoy. You need to live in today. Aaj aapke paas jitna paisa hai, aap usme enjoy kariye. There is enough money for your need. There cannot be enough money for your greed. So with this, I would like to end my session. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rahul, for that uh, wonderful presentation and uh, the do's and the don'ts of entrepreneurship journey. Thank you so much. Any questions from the participants, from the students, basically? Any questions from the students? Because uh, they are the ones who would be following the same path of entrepreneurship. So any questions that anyone would like to ask? Uh, one question from on the behalf of the students, Rahul, uh, that is what they should do. Yeah, again, the do's and the don'ts for the students, because uh, they would be passing out in another one or year or two years. So they, how they should go about it? Many people. Uh, do you have an entrepreneurship uh, cell in, in your? Uh... We, do have, we do have that, uh, but uh, since because of Corona, so things have gone a little slower. Uh, mm -hmm. The students are joining back the institute the next week, and we would be uh, then uh, uh, taking care of all those cells which have been developed. Okay. But uh, how they should go about it, like uh, uh, the fundings and the, the the as you said that we need to have a product. So right. how they should go about it? So I also uh, I never said to have a product because we ourselves are a services based company. Uh, see, first and foremost, and again, we are not funded. We are bootstrapped. And that is the best thing to do. If you, so we, we regularly get offers for funding. Uh, however, now we have reached at a stage wherein we don't need a lot of money to grow. Whatever we are making, we, we, we are sort of bootstrapped and whatever money that we are making, we can reinvest that. Now, if, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you should, you need to draw a line somewhere that I will give it three years or I'll give it five years. And then probably if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm not successful, probably I'll go back uh, and uh, do a job or uh, uh, will do some kind of further study and so on and so forth. Most important thing is you need to keep yourself motivated. Most important thing is don't waste your time. Most important thing is give it the committed time. Commit at least three years or five years because anything less than that and you may not be able to succeed and then you will blame the system, then you will blame the as environment surroundings blah 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 but give it three to five years and if, if you're doing it if you're doing it it will be great for everyone okay okay thank you any questions any questions from the students or the faculty members Maybe if it is possible, uh, once the uh, once everything goes normal and the students say here next week, whenever you come to Nagpur, do come and visit us. We'll do that. So we'll surely do that. Good that the students can interact with you physically. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so much for your time, Pooja. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, uh, Rahul, for giving time and uh, taking out time from your busy schedule. Thank you so much. No worries. It's thank you. Me. Take care. Bye -bye. To you. Thank you so much. Thank Pleasure. you. Bye. 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 Thank you all the participants uh, for joining.
I am closing the meeting now. Thank you. I particularly thank the faculty members uh, for uh, coming here and addressing uh, the thing and thank you all the students.